What's good, everyone? This is Dev the Coolest. And this is Ray Bang. And this is JB. And, and welcome, welcome to Slick Talk. Talk. Hey, with a hashtag. It's yep, yeah. lit, 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 lit. Don't forget that hashtag, y'all. <laughs> we so, find we so predictable. <laughs> right. we? We're, we're going to have to switch it up a little bit. It's season two. Whoa, That's funny. Know. Well, it's crazy. Just a sidebar before we go into it. So I was approached by like one of my friends or whatever, and it was like, it's lit, it's lit, it's lit. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And it was like, that's what you guys are saying. I was like, I don't say that. That's Dev the coolest. It's right. lit, it's, it's lit, lit, it's lit. lit. So you got that little catchphrase that you know. We're going to make a t-shirt. You're going to have that. It lit. Just <laughs> over and over. All right. Over. L-I-H is lit. It lit. It lit. It lit. It lit. So E-H-L-E. H. Shut up. No, no. <laughs> Throw the no. lit. They're like, it lit. I mean, what it language lit. is that? It lit. <laughs> it lit. That's the name of the language, death. Shut up. <laughs> anyway. Cute. So, um, <laughs> today. Today. I have a little icebreaker for y'all. Okay. Icebreaker? I love me yeah. a good icebreaker. Right. Yes. Um, Titanic. Bloopity. <laughs> I was thinking about, like, what do you consider is your guilty pleasure? A guilty pleasure. Yeah. Ooh. Pleasure. What is yours? Help us out. Like, give us an example of what your guilty pleasure. What would levels be. are we talking about? Extreme. 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 Ooh, okay. Extreme to like the regular X. one. Or you could start off as like a, a not so. Extreme How many one. are we giving? Just one, two. Give an ex- three examples. Three guilty pleasures. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Pleasures. Y'all about to know my whole life, child. Um, <laughs> for me, it's always like a glass of wine. Okay. Now that I have roommates that love wine as much as I do, it's almost every day. Mm. Um, I love YouTube, like clips, fin clips of sci-fi shows. Okay. Clips of sci-fi. sci-fi. Yeah. Oh, well. You know how they make like little videos of the sci-fi show, making like a whole other movie well, or we something got, or a trailer. Jesse, Jesse, you got some sci-fi. <laughs> I don't got no sci-fi, but I definitely have a clip that and will make you gag. Uh, my, um, <laughs> no pun literally, intended. no more intended. <laughs> My last one is um, I also like you know YouTube reaction videos to stuff. So oh. reaction. So wait, YouTube sci-fi and and YouTube reactions yes. to stuff. I like what, fan made stuff. YouTube sci-fi. YouTube. Know okay, is. you know, um, like say, what was the I like the magicians. I'm like so the, lost. a TV show named The Magicians, oh. and then there Do are you know fans. No, it's on the Sci-Fi Channel. Yeah. Oh, so YouTube has a Sci-Fi. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. The, oh, there's a sci-fi channel, and it's put on YouTube, the show. No. Oh, God. Oh, shut follow up me, follow me, follow me. <laughs> so there is a sci-fi channel right. that has shows right. that people will take clips of that show and make a whole new little story and put it on YouTube. Oh, And it will be dope. Like, these people, are, like, they can make trailers. Interesting. Really? They're really dope. Oh, I might want to check that out. Right. You lost me in the beginning. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this is. Like, <laughs> I don't know I'm where so we're confused. Going. Y'all already know Marvel. <laughs> but hold on. You just reminded me of this clip that's been going down. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet. But it, I think it's called the uh, the oral sex demon. Oh, what? I saw it. It's I called saw the, it. You seen it? The oral it. sex. Do you ever see the oral sex no. demon? Child, listen. I'm going to show you. Oh hold on. I think I have it right I now. think I, I think have it every thing. week. Oh, my God. Look <laughs> it. Hold on. <laughs> Look at her face. What the hell? <laughs> Ow. Is this church? Oh, man. Yes, I don't know what church that is. I think what it says the... it on there. Oh. I'm done. She said deli- <laughs> but look at her. Look at her. <laughs> oh, it's your... I am <laughs> But wait, you gotta see this. She's like Tina Turner. <laughs> Oh my god! Why he hit her in the hair like that? Look at her. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where's she going? Wait, so this is enough. Yeah, that's enough. This is enough. I'm surprised. What? I'm surprised Ray has not what seen What the hell that did yet. I just watch? The where where was she demon. going? Wait, where was that? Because I said like, like it was a church, an international where, where, church. It, it said it on there. I don't know. It, oh, said, it, said, it, it there? says it on there. We oh. can revisit it, but it's, it says it on I'm there. I'm not so revisiting I'm, nothing. It's an international <laughs> church, and I'm like, oh, it's, it says Haiti. <laughs> no. no, I'm just kidding. I, I'm just first kidding. of all, not, I'm nobody just, in that church looks anywhere I'm near Haitian. Oh, I'm just Haiti. joking. <laughs> 
I hate you. I'm just joking. <laughs> I can't stand no, you. but anyway, so I'm surprised you didn't see that. But we see your reaction. I've seen so. the picture like on like stuff people are watching, but I've never like clicked on it. Oh, um, I like, thought I had sent it to you too, but not her getting possessed in church. Oh, no, sex. Let the oil. And then the, the stuff started dripping out. Her mouth. I said, "This is too much." Do uh, wow. you imagine so being somebody away. in the congregation watching? Okay, and, and they like, look so serious and stuff. Right. Like, I never not want to go to church so much in my life. <laughs> okay, so you back to what you were saying. So you so said guilty pleasures. So. Guilty mm-hmm. pleasures. Okay, what are yours? Sorry. <laughs> oh, you said all yours already? I did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, what are I mean, mine? All mine. Yeah. They don't need to know all of my guilty pleasures. Bloopity got. Um, one of my guilty pleasures <laughs> is I actually. I know it's kind of crazy, but I actually like threesomes. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I love how we just. <laughs> That is not I mean, bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So let me rephrase. So you, the, the, not there's threesome that you're here talking, but like sidebar, oh. because we're all friends and everything. But I just well, want to yeah, clarify. I, feel, I hope that goes the, without saying. I'm just, I'm just saying because people are listening to us for the first time probably. It's like, what are y'all yeah, into? No, no, no. It's specifically me. I'm, yeah. So yeah, I'm into threesomes um, a lot. Um, so that's one thing. And then what would be a next thing? Uh, no, Open your eyes, child. Like you don't know me. Anyways, um, I actually like to eat a lot. Okay. So I like eating. I guess is that a guilty pleasure? Yeah, it can be. It depends. If, if you're trying to have a healthy lifestyle, but you eating on the side anyway. Yeah, exactly. That's that. And then what is another one? Um. I'm I'm actually like a social media kind of like whore as well. What like I'm mean? on social media a lot. Come on, mm. whore. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean though? You have to clarify because yeah. social media whore could mean you're showing your body and stuff on social media. What, all the time. That? Is that what it means? Mm-hmm. Or it can mean you're addicted to social media. What do we call people I'm that are showing their bodies and stuff? On? I mean, I don't have a problem with it because I enjoy watching it. But I'm just oh. saying, like, <laughs> are they like social media hoes? That's what people call them. Right? On social media, I. Get, nah, what I think we, Instagram models or Instagram whole. I don't know. Sorry, guys. No, <laughs> no I literally am. A, I guess you could say I'm addicted to social media. I like social media. I try to find balance, just like I say all the time. I try to find balance in everything, including social media. But you know that new thing that they that pops up on your phone, that's on the iPhone, um, that shows you how much screen time oh, you have. Yeah, mine has a uh, how I'm bad not even going. No, 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 no. That's what we're not going to do. <laughs> so, no, no, Period. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's what we're not going to do. I'm not going to mention that number at all. What I am going to say is that it's high as fuck and it's embarrassing. <laughs> so me knowing that and being conscious of that, it definitely is a guilty pleasure that okay. I need to control because okay. you listen, it's. Yeah. Outrageous. That's real. Anyways, Ooh. yeah, yours. I'm gonna add another. Def. One. Go, oh, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. You add, you add um, another one. guilty pleasure I have is I like to draw some sexy shit. Oh, yeah. yes. And my artwork can be too. very That's central. Really nice. Not. <laughs> I don't like to show everything, you know, mm. but Just I enough. do like to show intimacy a lot mm. in my art. So it's classy. Mm. It's classy intimacy. It's yeah. nice though. To some people, some people is a little much. It's porn. Yeah, but to, to me, some it's, people it could be. Oh, yeah. let me do the eyes you was giving me. <laughs> oh my god! Shut up. <laughs> um, not the Wendy William eyes. Oh, good. Um, oh god! <laughs> a little shaky. Uh, shout out to her. Um, so my guilty pleasures, I don't even know. Honest, and I have all this time to think about it, and I still don't know of any. Uh, I like whiskey a lot. Come on, um, whiskey. What so kind of specific whiskey? Jameson. <laughs> Uh, it's when my you favorite. It right too. Yes, and Jameson. Maker's Mark is my my sip my sip whiskey. I need to cut back on it. Low key worried about my health. Could be an alcoholic. I don't know. No, no. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, so whiskey. Um, I don't know if this is a guilty pleasure. It's a pleasure that everyone should find pleasure in. I like sex. Like, that's not a guilty, that's not a guilty pleasure, guilty. right? No. I mean, I guess me growing up Christian, like mm. a very stern, strict Christian family, for me, it could be seen as a as a guilty pleasure. But I enjoy sex a lot. Yeah, um, I mean, safe, healthy sex. Safe, healthy, the, absolutely, yes. and not with a lot of people. I have my like uh, Whoopi Goldberg. I have my go tos. Oh, um, okay. Hey, y'all. Um, <laughs> not a lot of people. I'm still single now. If one of my go-tos want to snatch me up, y'all better go ahead and make that move. Uh, <laughs> but until then, y'all will never see each other in the same room. Oh, really? Uh, uh, really? They might have no. seen each other already. Oh, Maybe, I you're but they like know. me. Uh, Damn, oh well, I no. The only one? I mean, I'll, I'll be down for an orgy, but that's not my thing. Damn. Um, okay. That's not my thing, though. Oh. Um, this, I mean, it is, but it's not. I feel like a saint on this show. You're not. You're definitely not. <laughs> um, You're definitely my third not. One, after hour podcast. I think but. my third guilty pleasure 
would be The Sims. Really? Still? Yeah, The Sims 4. That's my I, mom's and my sister's yes, guilty that's, pleasure. That's, no one really knows that. I play The Sims, I but I'm like... I, I didn't know that. Yeah. I know you play video games. Yeah, I play video games a lot, but I play The Sims a lot, a lot. Really? <laughs> yeah. On your computer? Uh-huh. Really? The same computer I used to edit the, uh, really? the podcast. <laughs> really? Wow. Which no. Sims? A uh, 4. Oh, I'm asking like I, know. I don't even know. It's the most recent one. They have expansion packs. I haven't really purchased. I got uh, one. I but it's, know this, but they, they're off the hook. I know my mom has a son. Oh, and they be like fucking and everything. Yeah, they be having and, like, sex, having kids, everything. twins, I'm like, triplets. Why are you showing me this? Mm-hmm. Oh, this and now they have which is uh, which is beautiful. They have like non-binary options for the Sims, oh, okay. and they also the men can get pregnant on the Sims now. Really? Mm-hmm. That's oh. like. <laughs> <laughs> How does that come through? How does that, like, does it show the birth and everything? Well, no, they never show the actual birth, like of the mother or the father having the child. The they go to the they go to the hospital, or they can have it in the home, but they just kind of do that little switch thing, and the baby. Interesting, just there. yeah. So maybe the right. Sims is above the curve than we <laughs> it's are. The head of the curve, the yeah. head of the curve. Uh, yeah. Well, hmm, uh, but yeah, that's my okay. third guilty. Guilty pleasure. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about today? <laughs> I thought of a topic today being at work. Um, it's about being black in the workspace. Okay. Ooh. And I know for us it's very different because we're in different fields. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if, if you're... Our like, experiences are a little yeah, different. It's yeah. Very exp- and I have a lot of them. But um, I want to start with you. Do you have the coolest? Uh, I was like, who? Like, uh, who? <laughs> That's a little spill. Um, okay, yeah. So I guess I'll be coming from more of an entertainment standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an actor uh, full-time now. Um, and what's up? What's up? Yeah, it's it's okay. it's fun. It's a fun industry. I would be lying, and I know so many of my fellow black actors or any black person in entertainment could attest to this that the the opportunities are not there, um, which is forcing us to create our own opportunities. Hence, Issa Rae, Jordan Peele. Yes, uh, those are notable names. Um, Ava DuVernay. But um, like, it's interesting because I'll get most times casted as like a supporting. Mm-hmm. or an extra because when you're looking at the casting calls mm-hmm. they uh, list the race that they want the ethnicity so they'll ask for Caucasian mm-hmm. or uh, ethnically ethnically ambiguous wow mm-hmm. so that is we, essentially a light skin well, black yeah, person yeah. explain that <laughs> that just means like you, you if, we, if you were to see thing. somebody in the street you wouldn't be able to like guess what their ethnic skin, background black, is uh, Latino but it, but that but that's just a nice way to say light skin black person yeah honestly wow. like that's basically what it is um, or like exotic which is not a good term to use but you know like that's just kind of what they yeah. go for with that um so i do experience a lot of uh i don't know if i want to say prejudice as much as lack of opportunity for mm-hmm. dark skinned black people in the mm-hmm. entertainment yeah. business cuz we're still in a space of we don't sell quote unquote even though we yeah. do but yeah. and that's one thing I, I actually noticed too is like when i um watch who got oscars mm-hmm. like cuz you know i don't watch the oscars i watch the clips of who won Mm-hmm. I skip to the black people um, <laughs> and the performances. It's of like the black people. The few black people that do win are always supporting actors. Right. Mm-hmm. It's rare. It's rare. The la- I don't. Uh, Denzel won. Denzel and Holly Berry mm-hmm. and Holly Berry. Um, who else? But the thing, the fact that we can just name these people, like, yeah. yeah, is that's it's just a testament to how it how it is. Yeah. yeah, like we, I wouldn't be able to tell you five years ago who won because it's just like it's like a blur of absolutely white faces, right? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's been my wow. experience. From uh, kind of obviously just given my overall experience. So with that. JB, yeah. I know right now you like traveling the world. <laughs> and uh, so give us a little um, a little spill on what was your experience like when you were working yeah. in hospitality oh so you want to hear about hospitality well I guess I would definitely feel more comfortable with speaking on my hospitality background mm-hmm. um, because right uh, my hospitality background, I feel, is more. I have more information to speak on as opposed to my creative directing and podcasting now. Um, but what I will say um, with hospitality, it's very, it's a very interesting industry. And what I mean by that is the higher you get up in position, what I've seen, um, I was working in hospitality for like four years. Um, going on five, but what I've seen is the higher you get up, the least amount of people of color. Black people mm-hmm. specifically, speaking on myself, you see. So it starts off at like um, 
uh, the room attendants, you know, um, some people call them maids or whatever, but they're room attendants. So it starts off of there. And it's crazy because you'll you'll see a lot more people of color in those positions. Mm-hmm. But the people of color that you see are kind of like, you know, the stereotypical people you would believe, which is like, you know, Asians or like uh, Latinos or, you know, um, even some Africans that have migrated, you mm-hmm. know, um, um, that came over here um, and that are immigrants. Um, those are like easy jobs for them to get. Um, so you see those and then the, it goes to the front desk where you see, you know, people of color at the front desk. But the higher, you, more you get up to, you know, um, people uh, people in higher positions management and mm-hmm. you know um front desk uh supervisors and mm-hmm. you know the corporate office it just gets less and less so it in the beginning for me it was definitely um it didn't it didn't make me feel good and i yeah. felt like i didn't have a chance to reach those heights starting at the front desk mm-hmm. but then also i knew that i was confident within myself and i knew what i can bring to every position in the hotel so i just kept on working my ass off which we have to do as black people, black men in general, oh, work yeah. 10 times as hard mm-hmm. just to prove that we're, you know, capable enough of carrying a position mm-hmm. higher up. So that's essentially what I did um, is I just kept on working and, you know, um, putting my mind to the fact that I wanted to be a, a front desk lead and then I wanted to be assistant front office manager, that I wanted to be a front office manager and then I wanted to be a hotel manager and so on and so on. So that's all it, it, it did to me. It definitely had moments where, you know, I felt like I didn't want to be in that field in hospitality field because Mm -hmm. I didn't see people like myself and I felt like I wasn't understood you know for being a black man in my perspective I felt like you know when I walk through the door they automatically have this preconceived notion of how I want to run the ship and I'm like no we're a team yeah you know don't believe that I run it this way I'm going to be aggressive or I'm you know not going to listen to your impact or no your information or your uh your feedback uh, just because I'm in this position right now and I'm yeah. front office manager, hotel manager, like I'm definitely open to everyone's idea, but it's just something that they place on us uh, as black people and black men that they, you know, I think people it's that, intimidation, honestly. It probably yeah. is definitely is. an intimidation and, and not knowing what to expect and not being in the presence of of enough, not wanting having to friends have control. or something. And wanting to have control and stuff. So yeah. for me, it definitely was several... Um, I mean, just to wrap it all in, it was several different um, situations where, you know, I felt, you know, like I was singled out yeah. or I felt like I was incapable of, you know, doing my best because I didn't have the support that I should have been receiving from corporate or, yeah, oof. you know, so it's definitely it's a, it's definitely an interesting industry to be in as a black person, as a black man as well. Uh, you know, I, I personally can speak from my experience, but, you know, as a black man specifically, yeah. it, it gets pretty tough in the hospitality industry. For me, um, right now, I'm actually very privileged in the job that I have because this is the first time in a corporate job that I see diversity in the workplace. And, like, there's kind of like this equal amount of like gender and race. Like my office looks like if you wanted to walk into the office and see what it, like what you would want to see, mm-hmm. I have that. And I'm so privileged. And we also, we're a tight-knit group. We're a small office and we work very diligently and hard to get projects done. And we also, we don't have walls that separate us. That's another thing I really like about it. Sometimes, you know, you need that Mm -hmm. privacy because when you're trying to get some work done and 15 people are in the (laughs) office talking at the same time, I literally need headphones Mm -hmm. to get shit done. But to not have walls and to like know, okay, this person was talking to this customer and this is what was said. So when the customer tries to like get somebody else and switch some bullshit, you're like, no, that's not what she said. Exactly. This is what's up. This Mm -hmm. is what you're going to pay. Absolutely. (laughs) So that's really dope. Mm -hmm. And even before um, I moved um, to Oakland, the position that I have before that, I was at the Cross Culture Center, you know, at my school and I mean, Cross Cultural Center, if you wanted to have like one of the most ethical places to work in, mm-hmm. <laughs> that is it. We lead diversity on campus and led by Dr. Smith. Gotta give him a shout out. <laughs> Come um, on, Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith now, you know. He got, <laughs> hey, his, Dr. Smith. He got his PhD. Okay. Um, it was an, an amazing experience working with people that were all about learning about the differences, you know? Yeah. Like, I learned about other cultures, I learned about more. I learned more about women and 
gender and non-conforming identities and I learned about so many other cultures, like the diversity within one race. It was amazing. So I was yeah. ve- I've been very privileged these past few years, but I also make sure that I'm in a space where I have that. Yeah. Because now I don't do too well in spaces where it's too one male dominated or too white, you know? So would you, uh, my question would be, would you feel comfortable in a, a working space where they have pretty much pre- predominantly uh, black people? No. Yes. You would feel, <laughs> you said you would what? If I feel more comfortable to have what? Would you feel more? I said no. He said yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Would you <laughs> control your control your hands? <laughs> the hell. Okay. Would you feel uh, more comfortable in a in a working environment where pre- uh, predominantly everyone the workers were predominantly black? Absolutely. You would feel more comfortable. No, what? Not. I mean, I would feel. It's hard to say. How you go from absolutely? No, 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 to no. I you would... know what? Yes, I would. I would because. <laughs> okay. Because in a space where I'm at, even though you do have that diversity, you still feel, like, the difference as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know that even though you're not around all white people, Mm -hmm. you're still seen a certain way. Mm -hmm. And it's something that maybe is, sometimes it's, like, it's going to be psychological. Yeah. And I'm working towards, like, being myself. But, you know, I am very myself at work. I think it's probably, and I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I think it's probably it's it's it would be t- a tough answer for me. I can only speak for myself, we but it would know. be a, t- a tough answer. <laughs> you <laughs> always know. give that preference. I have to give that preference because <laughs> no, I don't want people to think I'm trying to blanket or give it a generalization. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it would be tough for us to even come up with an answer for that because it's what not a lot of like? yeah. Where is that at? You know, where is that? Well, at? the reason why I said no is because I feel like we would get into a space that we are in right now, but. Mm-hmm flipped Mm -hmm. like right now there's not enough of us at the table Mm -hmm. and there's too much of one thing at the table right Mm -hmm. now if there's too much of us at the table and not enough representation of other people i think that'll just be flipped i think it's just having the diversity the diversity is what's important the diversity and having the mix of men women different cultural backgrounds different identities however Mm -hmm. people view themselves that's Mm -hmm. important that's Mm -hmm. where you avoid running into issues like uh prada and gucci Mm -hmm. had with the blackface and Mm -hmm. stuff like that right um but too much uh like if it i would feel comfortable yes absolutely i would feel very comfortable but i don't think it would be the most uh conducive yeah it wouldn't be the most like i guess progressive uh model of running a business you don't believe it would be the most progressive. Mm. Hmm. I'm into um a, a black business. You know? Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm but into I, it. That I, isn't. I mean, that goes. Saying, with, that's not. Yeah, yeah. you can finish. Like, like, no, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, not, I'm not saying that it's. But we shouldn't have black businesses. I think yes, have black businesses. Be black owners. Be at the table. If you if it's majority majority black, absolutely. But having it like just n- be all eight, black. nine black, one Asian, for example, it'd be like. Well, in, a depend, 10, it, in a 10 people board like I feel like that's just that's kind of like fighting against the argument that like we are not like like why like because right now as a black community this now this is generalizing we're, we're saying like we're upset because we're not there mm-hmm. because these tables are mm-hmm. like predominantly white if not all white mm-hmm. right um, now I guess w- my question to that because what I'm getting at is I just don't see how it would be different if it was all black well, those, de- so I guess what what are you getting at? Like what what before Ray goes, mm-hmm. I think it would depend on what job and what area uh, what what job what are we providing? Well, you know, I mean, what kind of business so it is. I think that would depend. Let's on let's that. use Gucci as an example since they were the most recent one under fire. I mean, I don't know. Like I I'm generalizing because it's like But and again, we can't use Gucci because we already know that a lot of ble- I mean, we have celebrities and stuff that are purchasing Well, so Gucci. I guess okay, then let's um, I hate to answer a question with a question, but now going back to the original question, what if in your mind what were you thinking? Like what kind of business were you thinking when you were saying like having more black people at or like the table? just one company? Yeah, or like I mean, what, there's a, was there's there a, a lot. Of, I mean, one that well, I mean, I mind? can think of like a mortgage company or something. Okay, well, I mean, let's go with that. That's, yeah, like a I mean, mortgage company or like an insurance an example, company but... or something like that that has nothing but you know black or just like a. I think somebody wanted to get into. Um, uh, what is it? Not uh, real estate. Real estate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like a real estate company where you have nothing but black agents working at the firm mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's all what I'm thinking. Or all at a, a law firm where you have all black right. lawyers. Right now, that I think 
so yeah, now it gets kind of, you know, murky for me because it's like, well, yeah, obviously I would want to support that because they look like me and they would want to represent me. I guess in my mind, I was thinking of more of a larger corporation oh, okay. vibe, mm-hmm. like a yeah. Pandora or like a Spotify or like a, like a bigger established we never, I don't think we would company. ever be able to but get it, to but that. But that was level. in my mind what we were talking saying. about. Because you're so thinking way bigger. Exactly. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, I believe more so in like community-based businesses and I think like uh, the business should reflect the community that it's in. So for me, it's like if I'm going to have a bank in a community and a black-owned bank, I want mm-hmm. black staff there because they know how I want people from the community to work in that bank because they they will know how to interact with people there. Right. And mm-hmm. it will be less friction. Yeah. So that, for me, that will be very important. I think, yeah, and I get what Dever is saying yeah. on a larger scale. On a larger scale you know, corporate, larger you have corporate to reflect, scale. you know, the public in a sense. And, um, but I think we do need way more black people at the table. Although, <laughs> I don't think if the roles were reversed to what you said earlier, mm-hmm. uh, Dev, the coolest, I don't think if the roles were reversed, we would kind of act the way that we are treated according to right now. And I mean, maybe I'm just a little biased, <laughs> but I feel like a lot of stuff just that we're conscious well, of yeah, things because absolutely. we're black and we are, we are the oppressed, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So, so we're, we're conscious. A more we, aware we're a little bit more aware on. as opposed to people that are sitting in corporate Gucci that, that are high up that, college. that got paid. To, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they're not really thinking about how things are yeah. going to affect us per se because they're, it's not their experience. They're, it's not their experience. Mm-hmm. So if there was all black crew at a uh, sitting at a table mm-hmm. making decisions, you know, I'm I want to give us a little yeah. credit. Well, and no, believe yeah, that. I, but I guess it's like I'm I'm not even thinking like white audience. I'm thinking more like Pacific Islander, like Asian. Mm-hmm. You know, like if it was all black, what do we? Do? It's, for me, it's layered, right? Like, yeah. oppression is layered, right? And this is going to sound maybe ignorant to some people, but I think that we do layer ethnicities in this in our society. Absolutely. I, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I, now this, this is what may sound ignorant to some people. I was wondering. Not. I was like, that's But, nice. <laughs> like, in my mind, I see it as, obviously, white being one. And, unfortunately, I have to say obviously, but one. And then from there, you start to get, then you get to black. Because mm-hmm. we're the influencers of this society where the influencers are basically everything that's mm-hmm. going on. And then you have Latino, Latinx, right? Mm-hmm. Then you have the Asian community, then you have Pacific Islander, do you have native oh, I uh, indigenous why that people? Could be, so no, but that's what that no, I <laughs> yeah. exactly that can come I across as problematic, but mm. in my mind that's the the reality of it. So mm-hmm. as going back to being oppressed people that are conscious of mm-hmm. being oppressed, mm-hmm. we would have an obligation to make sure that we're bringing them into the room. At mm-hmm. that point, or just making mm-hmm. sure that they're represented or, properly, because exactly. we can. Exactly. I mean, we're closer. We're closer to other minorities mm-hmm. as opposed to you know uh, Caucasians, right? right. Uh, would you get? Would you well, say that? No, yeah, but I. Oh, we run out of time, but um, I just, it's just, I feel like we, I, I would be nervous and hesitant, not to say that we would do try it, to, but I would yeah. be hesitant that we would get into a mob mentality in the sense absolutely. of like, a group now think we mentality. got, the, yeah, yeah, group think, exactly. I group understand think, where you're mentality. coming from, but I think it also is subjective because you're talking about influence, but if you're also looking at resources, is that, that tier that you, Oh we yeah. About, oh no, 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 we're not yeah. talking, no, talking about resources. Okay. Okay. He's but, talking. He's definitely talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah we not, not even talking, go go to resources. Not not resources. Not we not, not even go go to like, resources. <laughs> <laughs> with all like, um, with all, all of what we said, like mm-hmm. going back to acting and entertainment, that's that's why we create spaces for ourselves yeah. because yeah. we are not at the table. That's Absolutely. why we need to get into hospitality a little bit more because mm-hmm. as you go up, you see less and less of us. Absolutely. I mean, you you sound like you got it made. Well, <laughs> for now, I mean, I still have my days where yeah. shit don't sound so and right, you know? Because you're, you're also doing manager. the groundwork. Yeah. Right? You're doing the groundwork. Yeah. 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 And I mean, you know what? That's my privilege in the office, but what I... I notice how other people are being treated in the field. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm like focusing on right now is how do I change this culture at work? Because it's a male dominated field. It's Mm -hmm. just, it, it's like a, it was like a, almost like a fluke that my office turned out the way it is. And Mm -hmm. I love it. However, I want to like make that happen for the field as well, because I Mm -hmm. I can tell that women in, in the, corporate world are suffering oh absolutely and unfortunately i sat down and listened to some stories and i'm like how are some of these still, people still working in 2019 
you know, and it's also ridiculous. HR. Right. <laughs> we would it's a whole nother right. Well, you would think we're a little bit more progressive, but yeah, no. Nah. That's why it's up to each and every one of us to make sure that wherever, whatever, be in the room. yes, yes. <laughs> be in the room. But not only when, when you get into the room, don't sit there by yourself, and sit right? Silent. So yeah, let's bring people in there. That's what I'm that's saying. Exactly what we're and that's doing. the thing about it. We like to get into the room and like be the only one at the table. Right. And, like can take. I don't want to be blanket, but I mean, a lot of us like to sit in the room and be like, oh, we made. It. We here. Yeah. We don't have to pull somebody Did else that doesn't Lala have the same said? opportunities. Lala said something about that. Like, how oh, she did. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't want to misquote her, but she said something to very, the very tune similar of, to that. Yeah, of what you just said. Like, it's not. It's a space. It's yeah. not like a spot. Yeah, yeah. Where there's enough room for us in this whole space. So, Absolutely. I mean, there's there's enough money in the world to go around to everybody. True. There is. It's just being Especially mismanaged. Especially when you got Kylie Jenner out here being a billionaire. <laughs> Hello. How that But happen? anyways, that's another conversation. <laughs> Yes, oh, Ray Bay. Well, thank you so much for asking that. Yeah, I think I definitely would want to uh, touch a little bit more. Yeah. on that. Br- probably bring somebody in or touch on. Absolutely, you know, your... I want to. I want to um, hear other Let's people's woman different in. people. Please, yes. mm-hmm. I um, I definitely want to ask a woman of her experiences in the workplace, but mm-hmm. just also you know exp- being then, a woman in the world, and then also probably the the biggest person that would at this point face a lot of uh adversity in the workplace would probably mm. be someone that's trans yes oh yeah right oh so yes i would want to hear their perspective or work their, and um, life Ooh. listen we, we stand with y'all <laughs> we stand with work and life we stand with y'all period listen, period lgb that's what the t stands for okay but um all right y'all thank y'all so much for listening to another episode of slick talk uh don't forget to like subscribe comment Mention us in your stories. DMs. Tell family. We're everywhere. Where we at? It's free. Oh, we're on iTunes, Spotify, Spotify SoundCloud, Google YouTube, Play. Google Play, Lipson, uh, Podcast. That's radio. it for now. But everything. <laughs> so, world everything. <laughs> you can find us. Just yeah. hashtag find a link tree. Yep. Come Big on, ass. link tree. Yes. Link. Oh, yeah, the link tree on our bio. Thank y'all so much for listening. We'll see y'all in two weeks. That's great.